everybody and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be starting a very exciting video because it's been a while since I've done one of these and I'm so excited to do another one. So this weekend I'm going to be doing a 48 hour readathon. <laughs> which I just, I love a good readathon. It's always so fun. I also haven't really had like a ton of time to read recently, which is rather upsetting. However, I think like for the next few weeks, it's gonna be kind of chill. So yeah, I just wanted to do some reading, have a good time. We're gonna get into it and we're gonna talk about the TBR <laughs> because the TBR is sort of ridiculous and this isn't even all of them. Look, I'm not that delusional. Like I really, I don't think I'm gonna be able to finish all of these. But I would like to, I'd like to make it through some of them. Some of these are like graphic novels, some of these are manga, so it's not quite as ridiculous as it kind of seems on surface level, but I can't lie, it is a little bit ridiculous. So we are just quickly, oh, they're all falling. Um, we're just quickly going to talk about the reading plan. So first of all, I have one book that like, if I don't finish this book this weekend, I'm gonna scream because I just want to like be done with this book because I've been reading it for like three weeks now. It's a buddy read. We were supposed to have it read by the end of February and now it's like we're over halfway through March at this point and I still haven't finished it but I'm going to aim to finish it this weekend and that is House of Sky and Breath by Sarah J Mass. Yes, I know. <laughs> Currently I am on page 383 so I'm like halfway through the book so I think I should be able to read like the 400 pages that are left. It's not awful. I'm not absolutely hating it. I just don't have a lot of thoughts towards it at this point in time. To be honest, it's just kind of happening. But the third book in the Crescent City series got announced, I think earlier this week, and it's set to be released in like January of 2024. So I feel like that's going to propel me to finish this because I'm like, I'm pretty excited about that one, even though I'm not that excited about reading this book, but like, if you know, you know. Like, I feel like if you've read this book, you understand my feelings about the series, but I'm very excited for that. So I'm like, all right, we're gonna read this, gonna get it done. Yeah, <laughs> so reading plan number one. I also have it on audio, which is very helpful. And then the other book that I'm absolutely aiming to finish this weekend is A Murderous Relation by Deanna Rayborn. This is the fifth book in the Veronica Speedwell mystery series. I have been talking about this series nonstop, so you probably could have guessed that one of these was going to be on my TBR for this weekend. This kind of has to do with Jack the Ripper, which I am also just super excited about that because when I first started the series, I think I also mentioned this in a vlog, that it's kind of like the, the adult version of sorts of the Stalking Jack the Ripper series and obviously like the first book in that series it's about Jack the Ripper so I'm like maybe it'll give me all of it's gonna, be so good. it's gonna be so good I just know it's gonna be good so I'm really excited to read some of this and then I have a little romance book which I think is gonna be really fun I picked this up at half price a couple of weeks ago and I've been meaning to read it and that is The Wisteria Society of Lady Scoundrels by India Holton first of all look at this cover like it's so stunning like oh the, the wisteria, I would assume that's what that is. Is that a poisonous plant? I think that's the point, right? Yes. Yes? All parts of the wisteria plant are considered highly toxic, especially the pods and the seeds. That sounds so fun. <laughs> because I know it's kind of like a, a historical romance type of situation, which like that on its own, I love, I'm into it. But then there's like, I think there's, yeah, the first sentence of the blurb on this, I was like, okay, I need that book. It says Cecilia, the hell, <laughs> her last name is so long, Bassingthwaite is the ideal Victorian lady. She's also a thief. Like that sounds so fun. She's got a dangerously charming henchman. No, there's a pirate that has a dangerously charming henchman. <laughs> okay. Okay, this sounds absolutely ridiculous and I'm into it. Like I'm really into this concept. So I'm really hoping I can also read this book this weekend. And then I have like one more other like proper novel that I'm hoping to start this weekend. I don't think I'm gonna finish it because it's a very long book, but I heard Jodi talk about this book and she loved it. And then I heard Perry from Six of Chaos also like talk about this book and absolutely love it. And I was like, I, I feel like I have very similar reading tastes to them. So I was like, okay, I need to pick this book up right now. And that is Fear the Flames by Olivia Rose Darling. I am like a couple of chapters into this because I was interested in maybe checking it out. So I read like a, um, 
like a preview of it like i read the first few chapters like that you can you can like read them like through kindle you know what i'm talking about and i was like okay this sounds fun i need it it is a fantasy romance that's honestly all i know honestly i did not look into the synopsis of this book whatsoever jody and perry give it five stars and i was like all right i need it we're gonna buy it so i just think oh, it sounds really fun and I have not read a fantasy romance in a couple of months and that is a crime hoping to jump into it however it's like 500 pages it's almost 600 pages like this is a long book but it's like a it's like a nice somewhat floppy paperback like I feel like once I start reading it it's gonna be good and I do believe this is the start to a series also I absolutely love the cover of this book like these dragons like shrouded in mist like yeah <laughs> I'm so excited and then I have some graphic novels and manga that we're going to talk about because I have a bunch. I've just, there's so many manga and graphic novels that I've been wanting to read recently. So I was like, let's just, we're going to read them all this weekend. So first of all, I have something very exciting because I finally, again, got volumes six, no, five and six of Spy Family from the library. So instead of just talking about how much I want to continue it, I'm actually going to continue it finally and i'm so i'm so excited like obviously these are a really good pick for a readathon because they're very short they won't take me very long and uh, i just want to be back with my man lloyd borger so i'm very excited to finally continue this however i'm not excited that this weirdo yuri is on the cover he makes me uncomfortable but like the rest of it is great i'm like we'll just look at this one instead <laughs> Then something very exciting has happened recently because currently it is March 17th as I'm filming this and Shadow and Bone season one came out yesterday and it's so good. Like I'm six episodes in. I will be finishing it this weekend. I thought that could also be something fun to like do because obviously 48 hours is a long time and I'm not going to be reading for like every single moment that I'm awake of those 48 hours. So I'm going to, you know, watch the last two episodes. It's been so good. But like also, maybe that's just because the crows are carrying this season. And I love it so much. Like honestly, whenever they start talking about like shadow and bone material, I'm like, mm, okay, like that's fine. But then when the crows are on the screen, I'm like, yeah. Yeah, I love them so much. I love the addition of Wylan and the crows. Stunning. I'm obsessed. All of that like does tie into the next book that I'm gonna talk about because I got sent this graphic novel from Dina. I think in like November maybe and I've been waiting to read it for this time because I was like you know it is like shadow and bone related so it'd be perfect to read it this weekend while I'm about to finish season two so we have Demon in the Wood by Lee Bardugo and Danny Pendergast this is a graphic novel version of the story the Demon in the Wood uh, the art style looks very pretty it's very colorful it's just looks like a good time so i will definitely be picking this up this weekend i do have one more graphic novel and that is the tea dragon society by kay o'neill it was really weird honestly because like this morning i was thinking about how i have a hold on it from the library and i was like i wonder if that's gonna come in like throughout the weekend so i can read it and then i looked down and i got a notification from libby telling me that my hold was available and i was like at this point I am convinced that Libby is just like reading my mind. Like every time I think like, oh, I wonder if my hold's available, like bam, two minutes later it's available. And I'm like, what's going on? Like, it's weird. <laughs> I'm not complaining, but it's weird. <laughs> so yes, that's everything. These are the reading plans. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, including the Tea Dragon Society. I don't think I'm gonna finish them all because I am not insane, but let's talk specifics. Currently it is 12.53. I have like a meeting with my like senior design project group thing that I'm doing for school and that's at like one. So I'm gonna start it at two on Friday. It's going to end at two on Sunday and we're just gonna see how much reading I can get done. Which, who am I starting with? No, I'm thinking I wanna save a murderous relation for not being my first book. Um, just because I don't know how I'm gonna feel about the Wisteria Society of Lady Scoundrels. So I'm gonna start with this one. And then I can save like the books that I know for sure I'm actually gonna love when I'm like running out of steam later. You know what I'm saying? So going to start off by reading this one. Goal is to like finish it today. Uh, maybe that's a bit ambitious, but it's like not that long. We'll see. <laughs> we'll just have to see. And then I'll probably also pick up maybe one of my volumes of Spy Family or just one of the graphic novels. I will also do that today. So 
Yes, we are just going to get into it. I really hope you guys enjoy the vlog and yeah, let's go. I have made quite a bit of progress in the Wisteria Society of Lady Scoundrels. I'm up to page 100 exactly. Chapter 9. And I am loving it, honestly. I'm having a really good time. But none of this is what I was expecting from this book at all. Like, it's pretty weird, but in a good way. It's like a way that I'm really enjoying. But every time, like, there's so many things that they talk about. I'm just like, what's happening? I don't know because in this book you are following pirates essentially I did not know that all of them were pirates I knew there was a pirate but I did not know everybody was a pirate they they go around England in their flying houses I thought they were like joking at first but I was like that's where did that even come from maybe the author watched Hal's moving castle and was like hmm, I could do something with that it's basically like a normal romance book but there's magic in it like a little bit of magic. It's not like everybody's like a witch or whatever. Although I do think there are witches in this book or like this series or something to that effect. But it's just like that little hint of magic that I'm like, okay, I'm intrigued. You have intrigued me because I do just generally love romance books, be that like contemporary or historical that do have like a little bit of magic in them like the x-hex you know it's like a normal romance but they're witches and this one so far it has focused a little bit more on their you know pirate <laughs> activities but there is a romance that i'm very much enjoying it is between our main character cecilia who is 19 i wasn't expecting her to be that young but i definitely like i like younger you know like main characters close to my age obviously and basically she has a there's like a little bit of a romance brewing with this dude named ned and throughout this book we've kind of learned about the the few different jobs <laughs> that he has um one of them is to assassinate our main character one of them is to make sure that nobody assassinates her main character and one of them is to bring our main character to her father who's kind of evil so like, he's got a lot of different conflicting roles and it's all just so ridiculous, but I'm having a really good time. So I am definitely gonna be able to finish this up tonight too. So that's exciting. It's definitely a very fast read and I, I'm i intrigued to, uh, to see where things are gonna go. And I think this book is very funny so far and I'm excited <laughs> to read some more. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that. <laughs> So it is currently 7.10 and I'm on my way to McDonald's to go get my second Diet Coke for the day because I'm gonna need some caffeine if I want to attempt to like stay up later. You know what I'm saying? But good update. I have finished my first book of the readathon, which was the Wisteria Society of Lady Scoundrels. And I think I'm gonna give this book a four stars. I really enjoyed it, honestly. Like there are definitely a lot of parts in this book that are just absolutely ridiculous, but in the best way like i really enjoyed it this definitely didn't feel like most uh like contemporary or like historical kind of romances that i read because of that kind of more fantastical element and just like some other gen generally <laughs> ridiculous situations like literally at one point queen victoria she plays like a rather large role in like the how the plot concludes <laughs> in this book and at one point she was using the magic to like make the entirety of i don't know like windsor castle or whatever it is like fly and i was like what? 
<laughs> like it's it was so <laughs> it was so ridiculous but it was also just like really fun really entertaining i loved the romance like ned i wish his name wasn't ned <laughs> but I guess his full name's Edward, so like that's a bit better, but he is everything that I look for in a, you know, like, love interest. He's snarky, he's rakish, I love it in like, you know, period things when they call men rakes, because I'm like, those are, like, those are the best ones. <laughs> like, those are the most interesting love interests, you know what I'm saying? And I loved his dynamic with our main character, Cecilia. It was so much fun. I feel like this was a really good pick to start out this readathon because now I'm just like, okay, yeah, one book down, had a really good time, let's read some more. It definitely wasn't a five star, but also, you know, like a, a very solid four star. I also <laughs> learned a fun fact today <laughs> from this book because I didn't know that the Bronte sisters, because there's three of them, they had a brother. <laughs> because in this book, somebody is related to the Brontes. Um, I shall not say who, even though it probably doesn't matter, but I learned that they have a brother. I was like, who knew? I never, you know, looked into it, but I was like, that's a fun fact. So here's your fun fact for the day. His name is Branwell Bronte. And I was like, the alliteration. That's a really cool name. I can't lie. One book down for the readathon. Very excited about that. So I'm off to get my Diet Coke. I'm probably also just going to get like dinner from McDonald's because, you know, it's a Friday. It's the weekend. We're doing a readathon. Let's celebrate. And when I get back, I'm going to watch another episode of Shadow and Bone, which I'm so excited about. I think this is going to be episode seven. Maybe I want like no spoilers here for like things that happen in the show, but I just want to like talk about it. It'll probably just be me screaming over Wyland and Jesper some more <laughs> because there's so much Wyland and Jesper content in the show. It is so good. I'm, I'm eating it up. Yeah, I feel like I've just been, <laughs> this update, I've just been like so excited about everything and that's amazing. So, um... Yes, what am I going to read next, though? That's a good question. Maybe I could read one of my... Hello. Maybe I will read one of my graphic novels. I could read Spy Family. I could read maybe Demon in the Woods, since I'm watching Shadow and Bone. Like, that would, that would make sense. And then after that, I think I'm going to pick up Sky and Breath. House of Sky and Breath. Yes. I think I'm going to aim to make some more progress in that tonight, so I can hopefully finish it up tomorrow. And then I can start the book that I'm most excited about which is a murderous relation. So yeah, I have very high hopes for this readathon. Um, so yeah, I think that's everything that I was going to tell you guys. <laughs> so I will talk to you guys later when I have an update. now i did indeed watch episode seven of shadow and bone i i liked it but the only problem is this was like a very shadow and bone centric episode which i know like sounds stupid but there was just a little too much like plot line from shadow and bone being used and like i know it's i know this is the show I know that's the point, but I just really enjoy the plot line with the crows so much more than like the shadow and bone plot line and like the actors are fantastic, like everybody's great, but I just like, I go feral <laughs> when the crows are in the show and when like shadow and bone stuff is happening, I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, that's pretty good too, but it's just not as good. You know what I'm saying? Like they were there for like three seconds and I was like, yay, and then I was like, okay, fine, <laughs> that's it, <laughs> but Anyway, one episode left. I don't know how it's gonna end because I feel like they've been doing stuff from Siege and Storm and Ruin and Rising. So like, is this gonna be the end of the Shadow and Bone plotline? I'm confused. I don't know. Literally no clue. But I am excited to find out. But I'm gonna watch that tomorrow. I'm gonna save that for tomorrow. But I also did my other Shadow and Bone related thing. <laughs> and I read The Demon in the Wood by Lee Bardugo and Payne. Penny Dendergast. Oh my god, I cannot speak to save my life. 
by Lee Bardugo and Danny Pendergast. I noticed at the end, like I was just flipping back through it, and Lee Bardugo dedicated this graphic novel to the cast and crew of Shadow and Bone, especially Ben, who is one of the good guys. And I thought it was so cute that she dedicated like the demon in the wood graphic novel to Ben Barnes who obviously plays the Darkling and it was, was like, that's adorable I love it. I ended up really enjoying this graphic novel. Also I thought like the art style was so cool. Like I'm a big fan of how this looks. You can kind of like see it there. I also love the color palette because it's all very like desaturated like muted tones but it's very pretty and I don't know just something about it. It's speaking to me and I appreciate it. But I also do just love being able to see more of the Darkling's backstory because I do feel like he is probably, I wouldn't say he's like the most, because I feel like that's a bold claim and like, how am I supposed to tell that? But I do feel like he is one of the more complex and like very well fleshed out villains that there is in like a YA series. And I love hearing about his backstory. I know in, I don't know if they do it in the books, but I know in like season one of Shadow and Bone, like the TV show, I know they show like a bit of his backstory from the time when he created the fold, but this, like the events of this, take place even like earlier than that in his life. And you can kind of see like the beginnings of how he got to how he is, hence this being the villain origin story. So I really enjoyed that. I thought it was very interesting to kind of see what the attitudes were towards Grisha like at this time in his life and even like how Grisha interacted with each other. I just thought it was a very, it wasn't what I was expecting. It was very interesting and I really liked being able to read about it. And yeah, it was a very solid graphic novel. If you like Shadow and Bone, I would highly recommend picking this up. I really enjoyed it. So yes, two books down for the readathon. Currently, did I say it's 9.45 now? For the rest of the night, I'm gonna read some more of this book. So big to just like hold here. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm not gonna finish this tonight, obviously, because I'm not insane. However, I would like to maybe read half of what's left in this book. Be, be like 200 pages. Maybe that's doable. I don't know. I just, my goal is to finish this tomorrow. So I would like to read a bunch of this tonight to kind of set myself up for that. You know what I'm saying? So hopefully. I just got this text from Cass. Can you read this? Look at that. Oh my god. I know she has to read The Burning Bridge for her like Ranger's Apprentice readathon. <laughs> but that's so cute and it's so perfect that I am also planning to read a lot tonight. So Cass will be joining us later. I think. She gets off of work soon, yeah. I'm so excited now that me and Cass are having a little reading date. It's so cute. <laughs> anyway. I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna stop. And I'm going to read some of this book. Do you want to say hello? Oh, is it recording? Yes. Oh. Hello. We've hello. been having hello. our little well. little reading date. A little, a little reading date. I'm reading book two, The Brain Bridge by Jonathan Reagan. Yeah, I need to finish this entire book tonight. So I texted Katie and I was like, hey, do you want a buddy read? Or like have a little reading date? I literally got the text while I was like filming an update for the vlog. So I already showed them. Oh, okay, okay. Okay, well, okay. It's backfired because we've spoke for like a half hour instead of reading. So. Yeah, really wasting my readathon time. No, I'm kidding. I needed a break. I need to finish this entire book tonight. Are you kidding me? Whose fault is that? Um, I know I just called you out there a little bit, but. A little bit, yeah. Hello. So it is currently, what time is it? 12.50, I'm so tired already. Like I can't lie, Cass is on FaceTime. We are hanging out, which does definitely like make me wanna stay up a bit later, but also I'm tired already. I do have a reading update for you, however, because I've read quite a decent amount of House of Sky and Breath. I'm up to page 540. I'm on part three now, which I think was called The Pit, which doesn't sound promising for them. But I, you know, it's okay. I don't really have a ton of thoughts on it is the problem. There's been like some good 
steamy scenes, I guess. I was gonna say good relationship development, but it's really just been some steamy scenes between Hunt and Bryce, and like, those are kind of fun. But also, I just don't love Hunt and Bryce. Like, I don't know why, but I just can't get super excited about their relationship like I do for their relationships in like, Akatar, for example. So it's like, I don't know. <laughs> know the one thing that i do really like about this series is like the the vast amount does not work of different types of creatures that she has in this world because you know an akatar it's just like fey they're witches in akatar maybe it's just fey and then in like throne of glass you've got like fey and witches but in this one there are just like a bunch of different creatures whatever you want to call them. And my favorite ones are like any type of sprite-like creature, like anything that kind of resembles like a pixie. And recently, this isn't really a spoiler because it's kind of just like a, a very small part of the plot, I think. Somebody released like three little fire sprites. Hello. <laughs> Excuse you. <laughs> I was talking. It's eight till... It's eight till. It's eight till. It's a quarter till. <laughs> like I was saying, there were some fun little fire sprites that were released from their little fire sprite prison, and they were triplets. I was like, they're so cute. But that's like the only redeeming quality I found so far. That's all I got. That's the update. I really have no other thoughts on the book at this point in time, but I'm closing on the end. I think I'll be able to finish it up tomorrow. Like tomorrow for sure. It'll be done. And then I can talk to Elaine about it. We can talk some smack. And then I'll move on. <laughs> That's the update. That's all I got. <laughs> what a good update. I'm so tired. <laughs> yeah, like I said, it's like one now. I think I'm gonna read for like half an hour more. See how much I can get done. And then I'm gonna go to sleep. Or maybe. Um, no. Maybe I will feel reinvigorated after half an hour and then I will, you know, read for another half hour. I know Cass still has like 150 pages of her book left or something. How many pages do you have left? I can't math. I can't Honestly, math. wait, you're creepily spot on. Well, I did like, read I that book. 100, 152 pages. Oh, I did read that book last year, so I figured it was in like the 250 range. It's 262. Yeah. It's like creepy how you're two pages off. I'm just that good. Are you kidding me? Actually, you're one page off because while you were speaking, I made it to page 111. Read another so. page. <laughs> Meanwhile, <laughs> I have like 300 pages left. Actually, it's a bit under 300. It's like 240 or something. So I'm going to read for like half an hour more or maybe an hour more. And then I'm going to go to sleep because like honestly, that Diet Coke that I had did not help me at all and I'm so tired but I'm going to try my best to stay up a bit longer and read some more of this book so I will probably talk to you guys tomorrow morning with an update <laughs>so it is currently saturday now it is noon well it's 1201 but like close enough and i have made quite a bit of progress in house of sky and breath i have 50 pages left do we see this that's it that's it <laughs> i'm so excited to finish it but i feel like i did not give many good updates last night because i was very tired but i have thoughts i've, ha I've had a lot of thoughts i feel like i haven't really given much of an update over these last like 300 pages but the more i read it the more I'm gonna give it a two stars. <laughs> like there are just, it's not bad, but there are just like a lot of things about this book that I don't like. And it pains me because I really went into this book with an open mind. I was like, what if it is better than House of Earth and Blood? But it wasn't. 
I, first of all, I feel like this book is way too long and like not enough happens in it to justify it being so long. Like, I feel like it's very, like, I don't know. I've read like 750 pages and I'm like, what's happened? Like things have happened, but just not enough. And I've just been rather bored reading it. Like I don't care for the plot and I don't care for the characters, which also doesn't help. Like, honestly, if I enjoyed the romance more, I could probably forgive more things about this book, but I just don't really like Bryce. I don't really like Hunt. I feel like Hunt doesn't really have much of, like, a personality, almost. He's just kind of, like, like, all of Sarah J. Mass's other love interests, and I'm like, I like the other ones more. <laughs> like, Hunt, he's definitely my least fate. Like, he's fine. He's a cool dude, I guess. But I just, I don't care about him. And Bryce annoys me. <laughs> so that is not helpful. So like the two of them together, like their relationship, I'm like, I'm over it. I'm very over it. And there's not even like good romance, honestly, in this book. They just have sex all the time, but like they don't ever talk about their feelings or anything. Like maybe once or twice. Like that's it. But like... I'm over it. And all of like the steamy, smutty scenes have all started to sound alike at this point. And I'm like, I don't even enjoy them anymore. I don't care about them. So like the main reason I love Sarah J Maas's books, like the romances, it's just not carrying in this series for me, which is not helpful. There are also like a ton of male POVs that I don't like. There's like so many men in this book and just Bryce. <laughs> Like there are some, some female like side characters, but they don't really get POVs or anything So it's kind of just like Bryce and this group of five men that we're following around and I'm like, I don't care about these men like that. Like I don't care what they're doing I don't like them literally the only POV that I enjoy is runes like I do really like rune He's grown on me a lot throughout the course of this book, but the rest of them. I'm just like eh. I do kind of like Ethan. I kind of like his perspective and like what's going on in his storyline throughout this book as well but like Cormac, Therion, are there more? There's like Hunt, I don't care about any of their POVs. <laughs> I wish I was loving it, I really do but I'm just like I'm not and that's fine. I'm glad it's almost done though and I can talk to Elaine about it because I was supposed to finish this book in February and we're like halfway through March now so I'm glad that I decided to read this during this readathon so I could just be done with it <laughs> which sounds terrible and like normally if i wasn't enjoying a book i would dnf it but a like it's not that bad it's just like not my favorite thing b it's a buddy read with elaine so like obviously i have to finish it for that reason and c i know i want to read the third book in this series so that is also another reason as to why i'm putting myself through this <laughs> Um, but it's fine because I literally only have 50 pages left. I'm so excited to reread the, I think it's the second to last chapter, maybe? That five pages, hopefully those five pages will, you know, make it seem like the other 795 were worth it. Um, we'll see. <laughs> I hate when I'm not enjoying a book, but I'm like reading it for a vlog because it just feels so negative. And like, I know I'm just putting myself through this. And like, there's no reason as to why I need to read this book, but... It's happening and I want to give you guys my thoughts on it. So if this seems negative, I'm so sorry. But I just like, I just don't like it. But it's fine. <laughs> I'm going to stop talking about it for now. Obviously, I will give you my final thoughts when I finish the 50 pages. But after that, I have decided that I'm going to read my two volumes of Spy Family, which I am so excited about. Hopefully, these will, um, you know. Oh, it already looks so good. I know I'm just like spoiling myself for what's gonna happen. Oh! I just saw a, <laughs> I just saw a panel. I'm gonna read both of these volumes today and then later I'm gonna read this, which I'm also so excited about. So, good reading plans for the rest of the day. And uh, yeah, I will talk to you when I finish the last 50 pages of Hosab. Hosab? Hosab. <laughs>
I know I have been talking some trash on this book, but a piece of information was just dropped. That is like I've made a connection. It, it is so cool. I can't lie. Wow. I don't know. Yeah. Anyway, I was like, no way. I'm not articulating my feelings well about this, but it was really cool. It is really cool. Oh my God. Okay, so it is four o'clock now. I have a couple of reading updates for you. I have not yet started Spy Family, but that's what we're doing next, so do not worry. But I did indeed finish the last 50 pages of House of Sky and Breath, and every time I hold this up, my camera recognizes Hunt's face and like tries to focus on him. So if we could not do that, that'd be great. But I can, like honestly, the last 50 pages were kind of sick. I can't lie. But the first 750 pages were certainly not sick and that's the issue. But like the ending of this book is so cool and I wish that the rest of this book, like I just wish it was better. I wish I liked it more, but I just don't. But I think I'm gonna give this book like a 2.75. It was gonna be a 2.5. But the ending of this book, like, I'm gonna give it a 2.75. And honestly, I commend Sarah J Maas for successfully drawing me back into this series and wanting to read the next book, even though I, like, did not really enjoy the majority of this book. But, like, I- there's no way I can't see how this is gonna play out. So, like, obviously I have to read the third book, so. I'm just so happy it's done. I also put this on my 2023 TBR, so I got to check off another book so that was exciting but yes last 50 pages very cool i did like being able to read them in the context that like the the first part of this book provided and since i knew what was gonna happen at the end of this book like as i was reading it i could kind of like pick up on those subtle hints as they were being dropped which is like the thing that i was like freaking out over during the b-roll because like they said something and i was like wait what if i was connecting things i was connecting a lot of things and that was really cool so yes yeah that's all i got i also did start reading a murderous relation i'm quite a bit through it i'm on page 127 so i think i'm almost like halfway through it and again i'm just enjoying this book so much like this series i'm obsessed with this series i will not spend too much time talking about it <laughs> no actually i will because like this is a reading vlog this is what you asked for so it's just i love it this series so much it's so fun especially this one they're not really investigating like the stalking every time i go every time i go to talk about jack the ripper i just like my brain automatically says stalking jack the ripper because of the freaking carry panascalco series they're not exactly investigating jack the ripper they're kind of investigating jack the ripper adjacent things i guess which i still really like it's still got that kind of like gritty london atmosphere that i love right now they are in a brothel <laughs> or i guess i don't know if they call it a brothel it's like a uh, it's a respectable brothel as i've kind of said about like all of the books in this series i don't like i'm not fully invested in the mystery aspect of it like if our two main characters veronica and stoker were not in this book i would absolutely not be having it <laughs> but because they're like our two main leads 
it's just like ah. anyway i do think i'm gonna be able to finish this book today as well which is exciting this will be book number four or no that's a lie because i'm gonna read spy family first so this will be book number like six or something of the readathon when i finish it later i think i should finish it with like time to spare so i'll probably be able to read some of fear the flame did i already tell you guys that i'm like a couple chapters into this I feel like I did. So those are kind of plans for when I finish this, but I do have immediate plans, meaning I'm gonna read volumes five and six of Spy Family, which I'm so excited about. I'm gonna like go downstairs so we can like switch up the uh, the background a bit more. I've just been filming this entire readathon in my room so far and even I'm getting bored. I'm just like filming in like the two places that I can from my room. So go downstairs, read some Spy Family, and I will let you guys know my thoughts when I finish them. a bit later it's like nine o'clock now i have indeed read my two volumes of spy family i loved them so much i thought it was really funny because in volume five anya's friend becky sees like a family portrait you know and she's like automatically in love with lloyd and i'm like girl same and she's like obsessed with him now and i just think it's really funny but yeah, these are great. I'm so glad I finally picked up Spy Family again. I love them so much. I think I'm also maybe going to read volumes 7 and 8 because I saw that they were available on Libby. So I could like read them on my iPad. You know, I might do that like later tonight or tomorrow. I figure, hey, if I'm going to read these, I should just like get completely caught up with the series because why not? So I might do that as well, but I'm so so excited that I read these. So yeah, that's kind of, that's all I have to say about it. Spy Family is great. If you haven't read Spy Family, I don't know what you're doing, but yes, for the rest of the night, my plans literally just consist of finishing a murderous relation, which I left upstairs, so that's unfortunate. No visual aids here, but I should be able to finish it tonight. I think it's like, it's a pretty short book. I think I have like less than 200 pages left. So yeah, those are the plans for tonight. We are five, is this five books down? Yes, I've read five books so far for this readathon. I guess now that I have, wait, no, how many? Cause I've read five, right? We have Posteria, Society, Demon in the Wood, House of Sky and Breath and these two. And then tomorrow I'm planning to read Tea Dragon Society. And then these two, and I'm gonna start Fear the Flames. So theoretically, maybe, <laughs> I will have read like eight books throughout this readathon, which I'm gonna be very happy with. Like I just haven't had a ton of time to do any reading recently. So this weekend and like this readathon has been so fun already because like that's all I've been doing, just reading. Actually, that's a lie <laughs> because I did watch the last episode of Shadow and Bone and I can't lie, like I still loved it, obviously. But in looking back on the season, I think I definitely enjoyed the first part of it a lot more. And it's just like, I just got a bit bored with the last two episodes because it mainly focused on wrapping up like the events of the Shadow and Bone trilogy. So I'm like, I don't like, I just want to see some more of the crows. <laughs> you know, I've definitely seen very mixed reviews on it. Like some people love it, but I've seen that some people aren't really vibing with it. And like, I see why, because like the way that they're choosing to weave together all of the plot lines from different books is honestly confusing at this point. <laughs> like there's so many things going on and I'm like, wait, didn't that happen like after the events? Like, I don't, I don't know what they're doing, but honestly, I don't even care. I just love the show. So basically whatever they're doing, I'm like, okay, yeah, we're going to do this now, I guess. <laughs> like I, I really enjoyed the first part of season two. I feel like it was very crow-centric, which I was like, yes, that's what I need. And it really made me want to reread Six of Crows, which may or may not be happening for a, uh, a certain reason at some point in time soon. When am I posting this? Can I tell you why? Yes, 
Yes, I can, because I'm posting this on the 27th, I think. Me and Cass are making Six of Crows, our like Wyverns and Words book club pick for April, which I'm so excited about because we were both texting about the show a few days ago and we were both like, we want to reread Six of Crows. We should do a buddy read. And then we were like, wait. <laughs> What if we just read it for the book club? And I'm so excited because it's been forever, I feel, since I read Six of Crows. It hasn't even been like a full two years, but I, it was so good. And I feel like I just need to, I need to give it a little reread. And I'm so excited to, to do it for the book club. So yeah, can't wait. Anyway, just rambling at this point. I'm going to go read some of A Murderous Relation, maybe read some Spy Family, and I will talk to you guys later. like 10 o'clock on Sunday morning. I fell asleep so early last night. It was like 10 p.m. and I was reading A Murderous Relation. I was like, I'm just gonna lay down for a minute. <laughs> like just a minute, <laughs> but I'll get back up. And then I did not. I woke up at like 4 a.m. All of the lights in my room were still on. It was a jarring experience. But I went back to sleep. But now I've been up for like two hours. I have been listening to my audiobook for A Murderous Relation and I'm very close to finishing it. I have Three pages left. Wow, I couldn't have waited. <laughs> I did not realize I only had three pages left. I can probably just tell you right now that I'm gonna give it four stars. <laughs> I don't know why I didn't wait to see how many pages I had left of this book before I gave you this update. It's literally, okay, whatever, doesn't matter. I'm definitely enjoying it. I don't think I'm enjoying it quite as much as I've been enjoying the others in the series, but I still really, I still really liked it. It was great. I do kind of feel like the pacing throughout this book was a bit slower compared to the other books in the series, but I still really liked it. There wasn't enough about Jack the Ripper though. That's my only complaint. <laughs> and you know, this is probably my own fault for having assumptions as to what I thought this book was gonna be, you know, centering on. But yeah, I feel like the back of these books always kind of hypes up the mystery and then it like never really delivers. <laughs> like, I like the mysteries, but they're just never super gripping. Like in my opinion, I really do just read it like for the, the interactions between the characters, like not even just the main characters, Veronica and Stoker, but there are like other friendships that are, you know, like present throughout this book that I just think are very entertaining. Like Stoker's brother is in this book and they have like a very, you know, like tenuous relationship, but it's really funny. And they have, you know, like people at Scotland Yard who, you know, think they're really annoying because they're always getting in the middle of all of these mysteries. I really just love all the characters in this series. Like they're all great. So four stars for this book, unless something happens to change in the next three pages, which I can't imagine it will. <laughs> Gonna finish this one really quickly. And then while I've been listening to the audiobook for that this morning, I did do a little journaling. I thought I could show you, I made a little page for my spring TBR. I used a bunch of like stickers and the washi tape that I got from Daiso when I went with Cass last weekend. It was so fun. And I love the stickers, like they're so cute, but I just wanted to write down all the books that I want to read this spring. I will probably make a video about my spring TBR like pretty soon. So if you if you looked at my spring TBR that I wrote down on this list, um, no, you didn't. Pretend that you don't know what it is and wait for my spring TBR video. 
but i i really like this page i like all the like i got these little sticker sheets where they go they're right here which i definitely showed in my last vlog but like i am obsessed with these like they're so small and like but i love them so much they're really good for journaling because they're just like nice little accent pieces if you will but i do really like how this turned out and then i also just like updated my journal because i needed to that's what i've been doing so far like i said it's 10 no it's 9 58 almost 10 <laughs> but i'm gonna finish this book very quickly apparently and then i think i might go i think i might go to starbucks get a little matcha sounds kind of good and then hopefully i can do some good reading over the next like four hours i think i'm gonna read those two volumes of spy family I'm gonna read The Dragon Tea Society, and then if I have time, I will start Fear the Flames. I don't know if I will have time, you know, originally I was gonna have time, but I decided, no. I'm gonna go to sleep at like 10 p.m. when I'm trying to do a 48-hour readathon, but it's fine, because I was gonna finish this book yesterday, but it's fine. It's not like it really matters. Anyway, I'm going to, those are kind of like the reading plans for today, so we're gonna get into it. I hope you enjoy the rest of the vlog. time with me so if you hear her tip tapping away on her computer like she always is don't mind her <laughs> do you want i'll make her say hi do you want to say hi to the ending of my vlog i'm about to be like i want to annoy katie <laughs> annoying. i was literally like two seconds ago i was like if you hear Cass typing or like being loud don't mind goodbye i hope you enjoyed the video don't forget to subscribe subscribe to katie <laughs> comment down below Whatever she told you to comment down below. I haven't told them to comment anything just yet. <laughs> okay, well, make sure you comment down below who your pair of attire would be. <laughs> <laughs> That's enough from Cass. Wrong vlog. Wrong vlog. This is your 48 hour. Never mind. Wrong vlog. Yeah, you wish you could read as much as Katie. Eight books, one vlog. Are you kidding me right now? Actually, it's nine books. Oh, wait, it's muted. <laughs> I said, actually, it's nine books, and then I realized it was muted. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I'm here to quickly wrap up the vlog because I managed to read nine books in this 48 hour period. I have six of them with me, and we're just gonna talk about them really quickly. So, the first one. Yet? It's been like three seconds. <laughs> <laughs> Are you done yet? Are no. You done yet? Are you done yet? No. <laughs> I haven't even started talking about the books yet. What? <laughs> what? Knowing me, I'll probably need like 15 minutes to film this outro bit, so no, I'll be back. I I'll be back. Felt. I'll be back. <laughs> Sorry, proceed. So nice of her to give me permission. <laughs> the first book that I finished in this 48 hour period was The Wisteria Society of Lady Scoundrels, and I gave this book a four stars. It was really fun. I don't know if I told you guys this, but I did buy the second book in the series already, and I'm really excited to read it. Like, it was it was very strange but in a good way and i'm excited to read some more from this author so then i read the first of like six graphic novels slash manga that i read in this 48 hour period i was really just using this readathon to catch up on like a bunch of like manga and graphic novels that i've been meaning to read so that's good but i did read demon in the wood because i did watch the last two episodes of shadow and bone in this vlog very much enjoyed it i thought the art style was very cool and i loved getting a look that was such a bad <laughs> Very much enjoyed it. I thought the art style was very cool. I loved getting a flip. Oh my god. Very much enjoyed it. I thought the art style was really cool. I loved the color palette and I loved getting a look into the Darkling's backstory. Then I finally, finally, finally finished House of Sky and Breath by Sarah J Mass. I am giving this one like a 2.75 but I'm rounding it down to a 2 on like Goodreads and like places where I can only give it like whole star ratings. So it, it happened. I feel like I... I 
say like the exact same thing about it every time I talk about it so like we're just gonna move on. It does make me so excited though for House of Flame and Shadow which I know like if you, if you know you know. If you know, you know. Then I picked up volumes five, six, seven, and eight of Spy Family, and I'm so glad that I'm finally like caught up with this series again because I've been talking about how I need to read these volumes for months, and it finally happened. I'm so excited. Honestly, I didn't love volume eight. It was kind of, I don't wanna say it was boring. I just wasn't really vibing with the mission that was going on in it. However, I still love Spy Family. Still like my favorite manga series. So I'm so glad that I finally was able to catch up with the series. I think the second season of the anime is coming out sometime this year. I'm so excited for it because I love the first season so much. Like the first, I don't know, like three or four volumes of this manga were so, so good. And like volumes five through eight, like they were fun too, but I just feel like they weren't quite as good as the first four, but I still really enjoyed them. I did also finish A Murderous Relation by Deanna Rayborn. This is book five in the Veronica Speedle mystery series. I'm giving this one a four stars. Kind of the same feelings towards what I read of Spy Family, which is random, but I did like, you know, some of the other books in this series a bit more. I feel like maybe, no. Is this my least favorite of the series so far? I wouldn't say it's my least favorite, but it wasn't quite as gripping as the other ones were, but I still definitely really enjoyed it and I had a good time. And then lastly, I read Tea Dragon Society by Kay O'Neill. This was about as cute and adorable as I thought it was gonna be. The art style is stunning. Let me tell you, like it is, I loved it so much. Like the story itself, it's fun, but it's basically about our main character who goes to work with this like tea shop owner and they have these things called tea dragons. So like each of the dragons has a name that like corresponds to a tea. So there's like chamomile, ginseng, uh, there's some others that I can't think of right now, but it was absolutely adorable. Like the the storyline itself, I'm like, yeah, okay. I feel like most graphic novels, like the storyline, I'm like, okay, sure. Like the art is really what carries graphic novels for me and it was so pretty. I absolutely loved it. So I think that's everything. Yes, I read nine books <laughs> in this 48 hour period and I am very content with that. Like I feel like I've really caught up on all the reading that I was wanting to do recently which is fantastic and I'm just so happy that I was able to spend the last two days doing my favorite thing. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. I had such a good time filming this video, so I really hope you guys enjoyed it as well. If you guys did enjoy, please do let me know down below. Are you guys fans of graphic novels or manga? I would love to know. Obviously, I am. I read a bunch of them this weekend and I really enjoyed all of them, so if you guys have any like recs or anything for me, I would love to hear them. But if you don't so much dabble in the graphic novels or manga, the genres, format, I guess I could call them. Uh, just let me know what you guys are reading, what you guys are up to. I would love to hear. And yeah, I'm gonna let you go and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye. Cass also says bye. <laughs>